How can certain species appear to shed complex traits and revert to more primitive forms, seemingly running evolution's arrow backward? In numerous lineages, from cave-dwelling fish that lose their eyesight to parasitic worms that abandon digestive organs, organisms exhibit trait losses that echo distant ancestors. This reverse evolution challenges the notion that evolution reliably drives increasing complexity and specialization. So far, so good until we examine why such trait loss arises despite our expectation of continual refinement. The reverse evolution mystery emerges when natural selection, genetic drift, and environmental pressures converge to favor the reduction or wholesale loss of traits once deemed indispensable. Under conditions where a complex feature becomes neutral or even costly, such as eyes in perpetual darkness or limbs in a burrowing worm, genes controlling that feature accumulate disabling mutations without penalty, driving populations towards simpler forms. At its core, the process hinges on relaxed selection and the economics of energy. Maintaining elaborate structures demands metabolic investment and developmental regulation. When a trait no longer confers a fitness advantage, natural selection no longer weeds out deleterious mutations, allowing function-disabling changes to spread. Over generations, entire developmental pathways can be pruned, eyes degenerate, limbs recede, and sensory organs regress, streamlining the organism for its new niche. Yet even this energy-saving logic conceals deeper complexities. Genetic and developmental pathways are highly interconnected, so mutations knocking out one structure can ripple through networks, producing unexpected side effects or novel adaptations. In cave fish, eye loss genes also influence pigmentation and metabolic pathways, creating suites of linked changes that reflect both regression and opportunistic rewiring. Similarly, parasites losing digestive tracts often co-opt hosts, desterexile direct nutrients, rewiring their physiology at a systemic level. At even finer scales, epigenetic regulation and regulatory RNA molecules can modulate trait expression without permanent genomic change, enabling rapid toggling between more and less complex phenotypes. Environmental triggers like prolonged darkness or parasitic lifestyles can initiate reversible down-degulation of developmental programs, producing plastic pseudo-reversals that only become genetically fixed when conditions persist long enough. In essence, the reverse evolution mystery is not a literal undoing of evolutionary progress, but a testament to evolution's flexibility. Loss can be as adaptive as gain. Much like the hysteresis paradox reveals how history shapes system responses, and deep-sea submersible failure underscores fragility under extreme pressure, reverse evolution highlights that complexity itself can become a liability, and shedding it may be nature's most expedient route to survival, the reverse evolution mystery reveals that some lineages lose complex traits and revert to simpler ancestral forms, contradicting the notion of ever-increasing complexity. In these cases, descendant species exhibit phenotypes that mirror those of their distant ancestors. This phenomenon challenges the assumption that evolution is strictly unidirectional. It suggests that genetic and developmental pathways for lost traits can be reactivated or further degraded under certain cave-dwelling fish. Astinax mexicanus, lose eyes and pigmentation, reverting to an ancestral, unpigmented form adapted to darkness. It is like a modern car being stripped of its advanced electronics and reverted to a basic engine-only design. Classical forward evolution describes the emergence of novel traits via mutation, selection, and drift, driving increased adaptation and diversification. Reverse evolution occurs when species lose complex characters and re-express simpler ancestral traits. Unlike mere trait loss, reverse evolution often involves the reactivation or further erosion of genetic networks once thought permanently altered. This distinction highlights that evolution can retrace steps under shifting selective pressures. Shellless slugs evolved from shelled snail ancestors display body plans reminiscent of ancestral gastropods. It is like rolling software updates back to a previous version, reinstating older features at the expense of newer ones. At the molecular level, reverse evolution often stems from mutations that inactivate or delete genes responsible for complex traits. Concurrently, changes in gene regulation, such as promoter loss or microRNA upregulation, 
can suppress developmental pathways that produce those traits. These genetic and epigenetic alterations accumulate neutrally when the trait becomes costly or unnecessary. As a result, the blueprint for ancestral features may be silenced or dismantled over time. Flightless island birds like the Galapagos cormorant harbor mutations in bone and feather genes needed for wing development. It is like commenting out lines of code that implement a feature, rendering it non-functional even though remnants remain in the code base. Pseudogenization, the process by which formerly functional genes accumulate disabling mutations, drives many reversions. Over generations, these pseudogenes degrade further as selective constraints relax. In some cases, entire genomic regions are deleted, permanently erasing the capacity to rebuild lost structures. These irreversible molecular changes contrast with reversible regulatory shifts, making true ancestral reversion rare. Olfactor receptor genes in aquatic mammals have become pseudogenes due to relaxed selection on smell in underwater environments. It is like tearing pages out of a manual so that certain instructions can never be followed again. <laughs> Ecological contexts such as nutrient-poor caves or predator-free islands can impose strong selection against energetically expensive structures. In darkness, eyes and pigmentation offer no advantage, so mutations disabling these traits become neutral or beneficial. Environmental pressures thus accelerate reverse evolution by favoring individuals that shed unnecessary features. Consequently, habitat shifts often coincide with de-evolutionary trends, Blind cave salamanders, Proteus anguinus, have lost eyesight and skin pigmentation after colonizing dark subterranean habitats. It is like a mountaineer discarding heavy gear at high altitude to conserve energy when it is no longer useful. Dolo's law posits that once a complex trait is lost, it cannot be re-evolved in the same form. Yet documented reversions, such as wing, regain in certain stick insects, reveal exceptions driven by latent developmental potentials. Nonlinear interactions among genes, epigenetics, and environment can reactivate dormant pathways, producing atavistic traits. These examples show that evolutionary trajectories can loop back under specific conditions. The stick insect genus, Temima, has independently regained wings multiple times in its evolutionary history. It is like a retired factory reopening using preserved blueprints despite decades of dormancy. Reverse evolution underscores the importance of developmental constraints and modularity in shaping evolutionary outcomes. It warns that morphological similarity to ancestral forms may reflect secondary simplification, not primitive lineage. Fossil records showing trait reemergence suggest that developmental potentials persist far longer than previously assumed. These insights refine our understanding of both lineage diversification and morphological evolution. Fossils of certain crustaceans display repeated loss and regain of defensive spines in response to predator presence. It is like uncovering that an old foundation in a building site can accommodate both new additions and the reconstruction of earlier wings. Modeling reverse evolution demands integrating gene regulatory networks, population genetics, and ecological feedbacks into computational frameworks. Distinguishing true reversions from convergent simplification requires robust comparative genomics and phylogenetic methods. Phenotypic plasticity and epigenetic memory further complicate detection as traits may reappear transiently without genomic change. These challenges call for interdisciplinary approaches, merging genomics, developmental biology, and field studies comparing genomes of winged and wingless insect populations necessitates tracing independent gene loss versus shared ancestral mutations. It is like differentiating between two chefs who independently create the same dish versus a chef reverting to a recipe from their apprenticeship. Emerging CRISPR tools enable precise toggling of ancestral gene networks to test developmental potentials in vivo. Advances in epigenomic profiling may reveal how chromatin states preserve or erase developmental memory over evolutionary timescales. Insights into reverse evolution could inform conservation by predicting species' responses to rapid environmental change. Ultimately, unraveling this mystery will deepen our grasp of evolutionary flexibility and the true limits of biological form. CRISPR reactivation of eye developmental genes in cavefish is being tested to assess their latent developmental capacity.
It is like using preserved architectural blueprints to reconstruct a historic monument revealing the hidden design beneath layers of modern renovations.